I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, cost, volume, profit analysis, probably the best way to talk about this. And um, in managerial accounting, as you know, we break costs down between fixed and variable. And the reason we do this is so we can come up with our contribution margin. And as we explained, we use contribution margin income statements so that we can very clearly see of our sales how much is contributing toward covering our fixed cost and then our operating income. And remember, you have sales minus variable cost, which gives you contribution margin. Um, then you have fixed expenses, and then you have operating income. And so the reason we call it contribution margin is because whatever this number is, it's contributing toward fixed expenses and then operating income. So we begin talking about a term called break-even. And break-even can be in units or it can be in dollars. And um, so if break-even units is 2,000 units, not how you spell unit, sorry. <laughs> um, and your sales price per unit is $4, then your break even dollars is 8000 So it's a simple concept, but it's something to keep in mind as we begin talking about the formulas we use and the terminology we use to analyze our cost, volume, profit. <clears throat> cost fixed and variable. Volume is our break-even units. The other thing we can look at is target units. Target units and target dollars. So break-even uh, by definition means that our operating income is zero. We're breaking even. And then we can have a target profit, and so if our target profit is $25,000, and that's what we're looking for right here in this operating income. So the, the most common formula that we use to get break-even units, and where you'll start out in this chapter, is we take our fixed cost, and we divide it by our contribution margin per unit. And so if you look over here, if your fixed cost is $20,000 and you're looking for break even, then you need your contribution margin to be $20,000 because contribution margin minus fixed expenses is zero or operating income. Um, and so <clears throat> if I know my sales price per unit and my variable expenses per unit, if my sales price per unit is $8 and my variable expenses per unit is $6, then my contribution margin per unit is $4. So how many of these do I need to sell to cover that fixed expense? And so that's where we take our 20,000, our fixed expenses, and divide it by our contribution per margin per unit, which is $4. So our break even is 5,000 units. So now we can test that out. If we sell 5,000 units, $8 each, that's 40,000. If we sell 5,000 units and it costs $6 each to make one, that should be two. <laughs> no, it's four. You know, you love it when this happens in a video. My contribution margin is 2. See, I knew it was wrong almost immediately. And so my 20,000 divided by 2, 10,000. And so 10,000 times 8 and 10,000 times 6. And that gives you 20,000, my contribution margin, minus my fixed expenses is 0. Um, I'm, I apologize for that, but sometimes it actually helps when I mess up. And I did just mess up on that, and I apologize. I should have used Excel to calculate this. 8 minus 6. This is why you always use formulas rather than calculating in your head. And then that would be my, and then my operating income would be my contribution margin minus my fixed expenses.
Okay, I just happen to be doing this video very early in the morning, so I probably shouldn't do this anymore. But you, you get it now, and like I said, sometimes it's a good thing when we make a mistake. It helps you understand it a little bit better, but that's the way the break-even units work. Now, the other thing we look at is our contribution margin ratio. And using the same example, our contribution margin is simply our contribution margin divided by our sales price. And so our contribution margin is 25%. And another way to, to discuss that or use that in our um, analysis is to say that for every dollar we sell, 25% of that is going to contribute toward covering our fixed, fixed expenses and our operating income. So we can also use our contribution margin to, to calculate our break-even. However, when we use our contribution margin, we calculate break-even sales. And so it's a very similar formula. It's our fixed cost divided by our contribution margin ratio. But that doesn't give us units. That gives us sales. And so in our example up here, my fixed expenses divided by my contribution margin ratio gives me $80,000, which is my break-even sales as I calculated up here. So the last thing I'm going to look at is how we use this to calculate target income um, or target units for operating income. And so let's say same example up here, except we want to have an operating income of $50,000. So instead of breaking even, instead of this being zero, we want our operating income to be 50000 So I'm going to copy the same, just so you can kind of see it. I'm going to copy this down here. And, um, of course, I used my formulas. And so, there. Um, but now we want an operating income of $50,000. So in order to do that, my contribution margin is going to have to be $70,000. And so how do I know what my sales need to be? Well, again, it's a very simple formula. We take our fixed cost and we add our operating income. And then we divide that by our contribution margin um, per unit if we want to get units. Or we take that same thing and we divide it by our contribution margin ratio to get our target profit, I'm sorry, target sales dollars for operating income. Okay, so if I took this formula, and I'll come over here, and I said, okay, I've got a fixed cost of 20000 And I have a target income of 50000 And I'm going to divide by my contribution margin per unit, which I determined was $2. So it did not like my parentheses because they were not necessary. I, I'm on a Mac, and I just love it. <laughs> um, so my contribution margin units is 45000 So... Let's check this out. If I have 45,000 units times $8 per unit, and then if I have 45,000 units times $6 per unit, which is my variable cost per unit, 360 minus 270 is 90. And again, that doesn't work. This doesn't make sense. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here and check my formula, and it didn't like my parentheses, but because it didn't like my parentheses, it didn't calculate this correctly. So now I made it like my parentheses, and it's 35000 Okay, so I used formulas, and so it corrected itself, and so my sales, 35000 times 8 is 280 my variable cost, 35000 times 6, is 210 The difference is 70 Minus my fixed expenses gives me an operating income of 
And I show you this because the nice thing about all of these formulas and really accounting in general is you can go back and check your work. And so I really wanted you to see that. I didn't do this one up here on purpose, but <laughs> down here, um, I wanted you to see that when you when you do your homework, for sure, when you're, when you're taking an exam, for sure, always go back and look at your answer and say, does that make sense? Can I rework the problem a different way and make sure that that works? Um, in real life, always, you want to double check your work. Have somebody else look at it and say, hey, I came up with um, what I think we need to sell for target units based on the operating income that management has given us, but I want to kind of talk through this with you and see that what I'm doing makes sense so you can back into those numbers. And that's accounting balances. It always works. And so always go back and look at your answers and make sure they make sense. Now this same um, last thing, our target sales dollars for operating income, as I told you, you can take your fixed expenses. Um, plus your operating income and divide it by your contribution margin ratio and you should get your target sales dollars for operating income which is also two hundred eighty thousand dollars and so anyway this is kind of you know just walking you through the cost volume profit analysis that you'll need to work through um, your homework and again move forward as you begin thinking about your career we'll also be using this in some of our case studies